we are today explaining how to work with RFM and how to work with background layers to create the model and to uh, create loads and combinations. Um, we will then take a closer look to the reinforced concrete design and at the end create uh, documents. The workflow in RFM is uh, in such way that you use RFM, the main module, to create the slab and the concrete structure itself, including loads and combinations. And then uh, you will use certain modules to do the design uh, in concrete. The most important modules are RF concrete that includes slab and beam design. Um, there is also additional modules for punching design, namely RF punch, or for column design, namely RF concrete column. RF concrete NL is a more um, advanced module for nonlinear analysis, especially used for deflection of slabs and for uh, deflection of uh, beams in correct situation. With RF Concrete Deflect, um, it is a more simple uh, module that we can use also to analyze deflections of uh, slabs. Uh, in the concrete design modules, we have following codes available. Eurocode 2, ACI 318, which is American code, uh, SI 262, which is a code from Switzerland, um, GB510, which is a Chinese code. Other codes are in preparation and will be also published on our uh, website when they are available and finished. I'd like to go now into the demonstration of the module itself and the live demonstration in the software. For those of you who are new, you can uh, ask short questions and my colleague uh, Robert Vogel will assist you with short answers. Uh, to ask questions, please use the small question uh, text box where you can type in short questions. Uh, you can show and hide the control panel, panel by clicking on the red uh, arrow on top of your uh, screen, typically on the right hand side of your screen you see this control panel. In the live demo we will now enter this structure that you see here on the screen and I will leave the PowerPoint presentation and explain a little bit about uh, the model itself. In many situations, you do not have a 3D model or a BIM model or a Tecla model or a Revit model uh, and you will have maybe only a sketch and but you will might want to use this sketch to um, model your structure inside RFM. Here you see a small uh, a slab crown plan uh, made in AutoCAD uh, you see where the walls are, we have here a beam, we have a column and you see some dimension. And I'm using this um, view uh, for uh, as a background layer in RFM um, to create the model very quickly. To do this, I open a new structure inside RFM and I'll have to enter a model name. Uh, it will be a 2D model and it will be according to Eurocode EN 1990, especially the loads will be according to Eurocode EN 1990 and we'll use the general settings for the national annexes throughout this project. Um, we'll create uh, combinations automatically according to this code and we'll create result combinations which are linear superpositioned results of the individual load cases. Now I can import the background layer. Um, either you can use file import and you see here DXF format import as background layer or you can also go to the data navigator and use the guide objects and 
here you find background layers. Right click on it and create a new background layer. I'll import one DXF file I have prepared here as a background layer and you can name it um, as you like, sketch from CAD. Also you have the option to import from a specific layer that you can select here. Uh, you might have drawn already certain lines inside your uh, CAD application that you might want to use uh, for your boundary lines, for your surfaces, but in this case I import the entire lines that I find here. I click on OK and you'll see uh, the slab, the outlines of the slab already in the background. These are not real lines, I cannot touch them at the moment. Now uh, the situation is so that my actual structural system will not be all the way to the end of the wall or to the outside of the wall but maybe also already end in the center of the wall and often it is so that as the structural boundary we use the center or the middle of the wall um, where the slab is uh, placed on. So how to do this? I can now use a tool called Set Parallel Line and with this Set Parallel Line tool I can create a line that is offset of a uh, line that I pick in this background layer. The offset I use here uh, with the half of the wall thickness which is in this case 18 centimeters. And now I can start clicking on the line and you see in the center of this wall a line is created. And I can now just simply click on all the wall edges that I have in my template and go around the slab here to quickly kind of grab the uh, geometry of the structure from this background layer. So I do not have to use any printed plans or uh, manual drawings, uh, calculate coordinates and so on. So the software is helping me here. Okay, one more here and then I have a pretty good idea of my um, slab. So I have to make a few more adjustments. For example, here there, my drawing wasn't that good. So I can enter manually now a line. I can snap to the existing nodes and create a perpendicular uh, connection here. I don't need this line anymore and I can just drag and drop the neighboring node there. So with a little bit of manual work I can fix up my model here. Here also I'd like to have a perpendicular connection. I just drag and drop it to the next line and fix my holes here. Okay, here maybe there is a node that I don't like to have. I can delete this node and merge the joint lines or members. So out of the two lines, one line is formed. Here again, I'll fix the little problems. This node I need, this node I need. Here it is all. There's a slight inaccuracy which is often happening when you work with uh, DXF files. Um, so we can fix this very rapidly uh, with the tools that our firm provide. Okay, okay. Here we need a little bit and one more situation here and we're almost done. Again here there is some inconsistency. Oh, 
Okay. Um, one other thing is I have here certain uh, rooms or offices that I would like to apply uh, loads in separate load cases. So it's a good idea to create not just one slab out of not just one surface out of this slab here, but create one surface for each wall. And that's why, for each room. And that's why I create here a few more lines so I can uh, draw basically my rooms and the oh, maybe I do it the other way. Hang on. So I have the correct boundary lines for the surfaces. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So once we are done, um, I can maybe delete this one node here. Once we are done, we can hide our background layer. And we can just either delete it or we do not have to delete it. We can go to the display tree and just hide it. Um, there's guide objects as well and we just hide the background layers. Okay. Next, uh, we'll have to enter the surfaces itself. So, um, I select the boundary lines. I have here already in this model a couple of materials. I use them, concrete C37. Of course, I can always pick something from the library that comes with the software. The thickness should be 300 millimeters and it's a standard surface type. I'll click on the boundary lines and quickly enter my surfaces one by one. And each surface represents one room that I might want to use later. Okay. Okay. Here we go, and we are done with the surfaces. Next, we'll enter quickly the linear supports from the walls. Okay, uh, I can either enter a rigid uh, linear or hinged linear uh, support, or as a specialty in RFM, I can use a so-called elastic support via wall. Um, this tool automatically provides the stiffness of the wall um, and for this I have to enter the dimensions of the wall. So the thickness is 360 millimeters, the height is 3 meters, the material of the wall I can pick here for example from uh, masonry. Uh, our fam has in its library also uh, the option to create certain masonry uh, wall types uh, made from brick and uh, composed with mortar and all um, the parameters that Eurocode uses. So it's quite, um, quite um, well, a lot of parameters you have to use in Eurocode to get actually the correct material parameters for uh, the masonry used to be in the wall. So from these parameters I can create then the can get then the modulus of elasticity, the shear modulus, and so on, that I need for an analysis. I'll use a linear elastic material law uh, for this, so I'm not using a, a non-linear masonry uh, uh, material model. Okay, and I also can address the um, support condition of the wall on top and bottom, and I will choose the hinged support condition. Okay, and I see as a result the stiffness for the vertical um, support of this created from this wall with the specified dimensions. Okay, next I'll just click on the lines that are supposed to be supported. Um, this one maybe not, I can erase it later. Okay. Okay, okay.
and one more here. Okay, um, accidentally I entered the support as well here, I'll delete it. Next will be point supports, nodal supports. I have a column in this area here and here I have an equivalent way to do it. There's also the option to select column and here I have to have the dimension of the columns and the height of the columns and the material. This time I stick with concrete, it should be also hinged and I can model it as an elastic surface foundation. That means uh, basically the software uh, uses the 300 by 300 rectangle uh, for an elastic support underneath the slab and um, this is a better model as if there would be just one node connected to the surface model uh, so we have a more uh, a small area that is elastically supported and that will help to avoid uh, singularities later on. Also at the same time uh, it will not show any results inside the column which is more or less uh, you know, the column material and it doesn't make sense to make a design there and I get design actually at the edge of the column. Okay. I forgot to have a support here, so I quickly, uh, actually, I can just drag and drop it, control and left mouse key pressed, and then drop it to the next neighboring line. So now everything seems to be all right. Um, and we are about ready with the model. Finally, I need to here enter the beam. Uh, that helps to support that wide span here of this surface. For this I select the uh, lines. I'll um, enable or the, make a member available and for this I need a cross-section. I enter here rectangle 400 times uh, 600 and made from concrete as well. And as a specialty here, I'll create a so-called rib. A rib uh, will place the cross-section, the rectangle, below the surface. And I can control it here uh, with these radio buttons. Now the position will be on the plus C side of the surface. And at the end, I will get internal forces from this beam composed of the part of the surface and the beam itself, the, the rectangle cross-section below. And I have to specify the effective width of the part of the surface and I can do this here with the effective width on both sides. So the software will then integrate the internal forces in the slab into 1D member internal forces uh, together with the beam, the eccentric beam that is located below the slab. We will see the forces then later as uh, beam forces. And we will also design this T-shape in the member design of uh, our concrete members. I can also uh, take control of the rigidity, stiffness um, of this part, of this beam part below the surface because um, in correct situation, the torsional stiffness of the beams are reduced pretty much often in standard practices so that you reduce the stiffness of, of this beam um, when you analyze the internal forces. I'll leave it here for 100% but I just wanted to let you know that you have this option. By clicking on OK, we'll see the eccentric beam here below the surface. Okay, this is the model and now we can um, maybe already start with my documentation for this um, slab. First of all I'd like to show the numbering of the lines and of the surfaces because those will then also show up in the tabular output of the 
uh, printout report. And I'll print this picture to the printout report. Um, this should be maybe 50% of a page. Um, and I'll click on OK. And the printout report template I'm going to use is will be from one that I prepared before, RF Concrete 2D. We see a short preview of the printout report uh, with all the tabular input and the picture that we just printed. So everything that I entered now is here already in a tabular format and uh, it's documented for checking later on. You can maybe zoom it to two pages, which gives a very compact uh, view of, of the printout report. Okay, once it's created, I close it again and I save it. Next, we'll have to deal with the loads and load combinations. Um, I can do this either here, create new load case, or I can do this in the tables. And in the tables, it's maybe more simple because I can just work like in the spreadsheet type and it's quite quick. Uh, first load case is self-weight, second load case is some live load, and it has action category um, in post office area. And it will always remember the last input, so what I have to do now is just enter quickly the other um, eight late, uh, we have seven surfaces, eight load cases in total. Okay, after this, I have um, the next table, which will sum up all the load cases in so-called actions, and I can design I can select which design situations I would like to work with. For this example, I will use the ultimate limit design situation and the serviceability uh, design situation, which is the quasi-permanent combination in Eurocode. After that, I get action combinations. Load combinations will stay empty because we work with without combinations, which are combinations um, which are combinations uh, that overlap linearly analyzed um, results. And at the end, we will mostly work with the result combination 5 and 6, which will include the envelope of all the design situations and serviceability situations. Note um, that we will use in the um, design situation um, additional partial safety factors, 1.35 and 1.5 for the office area. Okay, um, this is the combinations and the plain load cases. Next will be the loads itself. Uh, we'll create a new load, a uh, new surface load for the self-weight load case, 2.5 kilonewton per square meter, going to to all the surfaces. Next will be the live load, 3.5 kilonewton meter on each surface individually per load case. I can just change the load case while I, while I still enter and while I'm still in the entering mode of the load itself. So this way I'm rather quickly with entering those load cases. Last but not least, I will uh, take a look at the mesh generation parameters before I run the calculation. In the mesh settings, I'll have I set a target length for the finite elements of 500 millimeters. And if I work in a 2D uh, plate XY structure, I have an additional option that allows me to make a finer mesh along the edge of each surface. And you can control it by this parameter here. So. Um, this is a good idea because where I have the linear supports and mostly they are at the edges, I have large gradients uh, of stresses and uh, especially for shear forces, it will somewhat condense the, those extreme values closer to the edge inside, if you want so, inside of the wall. And they will not be uh, disturbing the design uh, later on in RF concrete surfaces uh, so much. 
Okay. And I do one more um, mesh refinement that will be done in the uh, area where I have the point support. Um, here I can just select the node, uh, right mouse click, finite element mesh refinement. I create a new one. Um, I'll use a rectangular type and I'll take over the default parameters which fit very well to the dimensions of the column with half a meter at the moment. Inside there is a finer mesh and on the outside uh, there will be uh, actually the target length of the global FE mesh that I just said before. So it, there's a, tra a good transition from the finer mesh to the uh, global target lengths uh, of the final of the finite element mesh. Okay, with this, I can start the analysis. So I can calculate all the results. Mesh is created automatically in the background, and I'll see uh, for each load case now first uh, the deflections. Um, I can also view the internal forces, maybe uh, in the top view. Um, I can now uh, also control, like if I want to see the finite element mesh or not, if I want to see my supports or not. Um, I can maybe hide the support lines because um, I don't want to see them now. I'd like to see the results. Okay, this picture now is good for documentation. I need my internal forces um, to put into the document. So how to do this? I have here the um, panel that indicates the magnitude of the forces and how to do that. I can print um, and use the mass print option. In the mass print option, I scale it to 50%. In the mass print option, I have the option to control the results of um, maybe selected load cases. Maybe I only want to see my final results, the ultimate limit and the quasi-permanent results in, in the envelope. And I click OK and I want to see MX, MY, MXY, the shear forces everything I sh want to have in this, uh, in the protocol. On OK, I'll um, then check show printout report on OK. I disable it because I don't want to always open the printout report. I just will drop it in my final uh, printout report. And I click OK and RFM then dumps it into the final printout report. Also of interest is uh, not only the surface support, uh, surface uh, internal forces, but also the support reactions. I enabled them here and you see that you can't see them because they are drawn below uh, in direction C. How to fix this problem? RFAM has a specialty that for 2D uh, surfaces, it can display the support reactions, it can draw them in X, Y plane. So I can kind of swap them over and then I see the support reactions here in a much better view. Often engineers do not work with the real lines of the support forces because um, when there is a masonry wall, the force uh, transfer is not one-to-one -one from from the support of the slab down to the next maybe wall below. Uh, there's some kind of um, distribution that is depending on the stiffness of the of the material that is used for the walls. So in many cases it's also suitable to work with uh, smooth mean uh, constant forces. So what we do is we integrate all the support forces along the line and average them to a mean 
value. So this is um, a good way that how you can maybe use those uh, inf this information also for um, a load on the next um, story that you have maybe below. So this type of picture I would like to print also in the printout report. So I use again the mass print option. I'll click on detail setting results. And this time I'm enabling the support reactions and local PC reactions, line supports and also the nodal supports. Okay, I don't want to do it for all the results. I only want to do it for the individual load cases um, because um, when I keep on calculating with those forces, it's a good control first of all and second of all um, I might have to apply different safety factors so the result combinations really don't help me very much uh, if I print them. Okay, all uh, load cases, all images of all load cases are printed in this way. Okay, then the next picture is maybe the member internal forces that I have to take a look at. If I look at my internal forces here, I can see here there are beam forces, bending moment, um, shear forces, uh, torsional moments and so on that come from the twist uh, introduced by the slab. Um, I can print also this result, but there is a other good way how to document it. It's in the so-called result diagram. And I can use this result diagram and print all my forces, um, maybe also including the deformation, um, into um, the printout report. And this time again I use the uh, envelope. Uh, maybe we stick with the bending moment and uh, shear force. Uh, maybe we add the torsion. Okay, we print this to the printout report. I will use an entire page for this this time. Okay. Good. Now we have already done all the internal forces, support reaction, bending moments, beam results. Next, we'll go to the concrete design. Here we'll first use the module RF concrete surfaces and the RF concrete surfaces module will design the surface surfaces as it says. We'll use for the ultimate limit design the result combination 5 which includes all the envelope, all the results of all the individual combinations. We use Eurocode uh, with the general settings um, of the Eurocode, the standard setting of the Eurocodes. For serviceability limit state design, we use the quasi-permanent um, combination. We can check the materials, which are just taken over from our fan. We'll see in the surface pane, we'll see a list of all the surfaces and I have different options here to check. First, um, we need to check the stresses. This is part of the serviceability check. The so stresses for the concrete that takes over the compression. Uh, record, regard, uh, regarding the code, there are certain settings that limit the compressive stress and you can just choose them. Everything is set up by default so you in general you wouldn't have to change anything. Also uh, stresses have to be limited. For example, typically to 80% of the yield stress of the material. If you want to, you can set those settings individually for each surface. And the next thing is the crack width control and um, here I have to define first of all um, what is the limiting crack width. It should be according to the exposure class and in this case I have XC1 which will be resulting in 0.4 as a crack width, as allowable crack width. 
Then the Eurocode knows three different options how to control CrackWidth. One is by limiting the di diameters, another one is by limiting the maximum spacing of the uh, bars, and the third one is the direct analysis of the correct width, which is the most sophisticated, I would say, and therefore I'm just using this one option instead of doing the same check three times. Uh, if it is important, you can also um, uh, analyze a minimum uh, reinforcement for effects due to an internal restraint. In this case, we don't have this. This can have an, a significant uh, amount um, of free bars um, as a consequence. Um, but this slab is can float free on the walls, so there is no um, restraint, basically, and we can ignore it. Um, okay, this was some settings regarding the serviceability check. Regarding the reinforcement, I'll first have to have an idea how much of reinforcement I need. And then I can decide if I put there a basic reinforcement that will be everywhere on the slab, uh, or if I have like two layers of reinforcement. One is a basic reinforcement and another one is an additional reinforcement. Um, the reinforcement layout is done in the second tab here where I first have to define the concrete cover. Here I can just pick it from the exposure class of the code uh, and it can be differently on top and on bottom of a slab because one can be exposed to an outside, one can be exposed to an inside, then you have different concrete covers that you need to uh, check. From these parameters, uh, RFM or RF concrete calculates the required um, cover. For the longitudinal reinforcement, I can already set a basic reinforcement, which I will do later, but first of all I want to have a first run of the analysis and see what situations do I have. And in the next tab I can check whether I need minimum reinforcement, uh, this is the ductility reinforcement basically, um, and the minimum longitudinal and the minimum shear reinforcement, this is required also by the code. Uh, there are several safety factors that we can address uh, due to the type of the loading, whether it is persistent and transient, accidental or serviceability. And those are actually national annex parameters and will be set according to the national annexes that you choose. Um, okay, those are the most important topics I would like to point out. Um, the national annex parameters can be shown down here. You can change them and also set them up differently if there are changes in the national annex or uh, whatever. Also in the details you have an option to, and maybe one point I need to uh, point out, uh, which internal forces you use for design. Remember we have a beam and that uses already a part of the, or integrates part of the internal forces from the slab and I'll get a design then in the next step for this T section. So this part of the slab that's, that's already part of the design in the member, in the, in the beam, I do not have to um, apply for this surface design. Uh, at least in the direction of the, the length, longitudinal direction of the beam. That's why I check this uh, checkbox here and um, I will not use it uh, for the surface design. Otherwise I will get reinforcement from the slab design or surface design and reinforcement from the beam design and that would be double and I don't want to have that. Okay. Now I'm ready to run the analysis and get a first idea about my reinforcement. We have a required reinforcement of about 20 
um, square centimeter per meter on the top, in the second direction, on the top, bottom direction, two directions, uh, top, first direction, second direction. Um, we also get a overview about the serviceability design. We'll see here there are some problems as well with uh, cracking and uh, also with concrete compression. Um, let's take a look where we have uh, those problems and I go to the graphic and we get first the display of the um, required reinforcement on the top on the top in the other direction. Note here the direction is indicated by these little red marks. Then we have the bottom reinforcement in one direction, bottom reinforcement in the other direction. Um, we see here now direction longitudinal to the beam takes out the design pretty much of this uh, reinforcement um, where we have uh, defined the beam. So RFM knows that there was one meter sixty left and right of this beam uh, and this, this section will be part of the uh, beam design. Okay, let's take a look of the content that we need of three bars. Let's, if we see like the blue and the greenish areas, we talk about 4.8, 4.08 uh, square centimeters per meter. So if I would cover this with a basic reinforcement, I would have only a few spots where I would have to have additional reinforcement. For example, here. Um, and if I look at the other direction, it would be, if I do here also four, then it's greenish. Uh, all the green parts will be taken care of. So uh, if I look at the top reinforcement, let's say four would be pretty much of the dark blue would be covered, only a few spots left. So I'm trying now to add a um, additional reinforcement or the basic reinforcement um, on the surface, on all the surfaces. Go to the reinforcement layout and re longitudinal reinforcement, I'm sorry. And here I can enter an existing provided reinforcement. Um, here either I pick a di diameter and a distance and I'll get the content of reinforcement shown below. For example, I can use a 10 millimeter bar every 200 millimeters. It will be about almost four, four square centimeters per meter of reinforcement. Or I can use wire fabric that I can buy maybe cheaper or it's easier to mount. And I can use some quadratic wire mesh um, for top and bottom. And this I'll use already for my design. It will play an important role for the serviceability um, check as well because the diameter plays a role here and I have already an existing uh, reinforcement there. Okay, I run the analysis again and now I have uh, different options to display my results. First of all, I have here a little bit less well, required is the same, but uh, I have here additional required and required. So there's a, the difference here. This is the basis reinforcement. Um, I can look at these results also by surface or by point and so on. If I want to, I also can uh, uh, look into the design details. So for every mesh point, I get an enormous amount of detailed results. Uh, that I can use to check my analysis if it is correct. So if there is one question, um, one doubt about the result, I can go there and I get all the results, I get all the details. So for every point on the, for every mesh point on the structure, I can, or for every grid point actually, I can get um, those uh, internal details. And we have a very powerful way to really uh, see what the software is doing internally. Okay, and the same is also here for serviceability design. And I see here, okay, with the crack width, we are fine. 
uh, there's only a small problem left with the compressive strength and if I click on here I see I see it's here where I have a punching problem actually at the end and I will have to do something anyway with it but maybe I can just neglect this part here for now. When I go to the graphics I have now additional options. I can um, show first of all the required reinforcement what we've seen before but now I can also say I want to see the required additional reinforcement so it shows me the difference of what I have provided by a basic reinforcement and what I have to add additionally so here this is for the top so there's pretty much nothing just at this point we have to think about doing something and here we'll do a punching check later on and on the bottom here I have maybe in this area I need to have extra reinforcement here is a small area but there's only about 1.292 maybe if I add a little bit more on the pro on the basic reinforcement after all I have not to do anything here anymore and the same thing is in the other direction uh, when I take a look at the serviceability I can check my concrete compressive strain, um, uh, uh, stress and I get uh, um, ratio if it's greater than one and it's exceeded if it's smaller than one it's fine so we have the yellow parts are pretty much okay uh, the steel stresses are okay overall and I have my crack width so I have only cracking that appears here a little bit here it's not surprising over the wall and of course here but this part again we have to do I have to take a closer look later also I can check the crack width on top and on bottom maybe on bottom in direction 1 and bottom in direction 2 and uh, also the resulting I'm sorry the resulting uh, of both directions can be shown okay I'd like to also show some values on the surfaces um, for printing because we also want to print uh, of course the results so maybe it's better to reduce the values for that I get only one value of so per surface of the max and the mean value so each time I change the result uh, those values will be then also adjusted I go to the reinforcement maybe the required reinforcement you get uh, a nice few also including some values um, which reinforcement you have there okay um, those pictures I'd like to print again so we'll print um, this picture we used mass print option we we'll use again 50% of page size um, and also for the concrete module I have the mass print option that I show all the results all the um, rebars or rebar content on top and bottom in all directions um, for all uh, cases and also the same thing for the required additional reinforcement so all in all it should be something like eight uh, graphs um, I click OK and I drop it again in my printout report so far about the design of the slabs next will be the design of the members of this beam here we enter the concrete member module um, and we use for the ultimate limit we also use Eurocode and we use for the ultimate limit design the um, result combination 5 and for the serviceability limit design result combination 6 this time I also activate creep and shrinkage um, that we can use here for this beam and uh, I'd like to point out that we can also do for beams and also for the column module we can do fire resistant design um, so if that is needed there is also it's also included in 
our concrete members and uh, for the columns. So next we'll go through the materials, check the materials, um, check the cross-sections. Um, next point will be ribs. As I said, we use part of the surfaces for the member internal forces and we entered it inside our fan. So what we're actually doing is we're designing um, a T-section and the internal forces come from the uh, surface and the beam below it and they are integrated to one member. So um, the effective width is given here. You have the option to change the effective width in the design module if you want to. So when you have a negative moment or a positive moment, you can um, design a smaller cross section where there are cracks, for example, and a bigger cross section where there are where the where the slab is in compression. So there are various options that you can use, and in the Eurocode, um, there are some requirements regarding this. Um, I'll stick with the simplified method and just keep everything constant at the moment. Also, I can reduce the shear forces that are near to supports. And I'll have to indicate where the supports are. And they are here at those points. And I have to indicate whether it is an end support or an intermediate support. And I have to enter the width of the support. So this will optimize my results um, in there. Next, I'll go to the reinforcement. We can now enter, uh, design uh, which diameters are possible. So we choose 14, 16, 20 millimeters of longitudinal rebars. Uh, same thing for the links. We can define which diameters we want to use there. We can use certain spacing of links, there are certain options that you can use. Um, reinforcement layout, it's similar to the reinforcement layout that we had in the surface model uh, where we, for example, have to find the cover of the concrete. I use again com uh, ex exposure, exposure class XC1. Yes, minimum reinforcement uh, ductility reinforcement is uh, taken care of and I need to have the concrete cover setting as well. Okay, um, with this I'll start my analysis and run uh, the design of the beam. We see here first an overview again about the required reinforcement and the provided reinforcement. So you get a reinforcement suggestion that you can use. We can also use a 3D rendered view that we can show. And we can print this to the printout report as well. Here I use again 50% of a page. Um, same thing for the Shear reinforcement, you get here a sketch of the shear reinforcement that will be also part of the printout report. Um, for the serviceability check, we see here uh, that we have actually um, crack width of 0.2 for the maximum. The deflection is here um, and everything seems to be quite okay. We can take a look at the graphics. Well, show here the graphic view of the um, um, beam and we see here the top and the bottom reinforcement as well um, we can show the provided top and bottom reinforcement so we see the software provided more as required so we on the safe uh, side. If you want to, you can subdivide those members and make it more um, individual along the beam. Yeah. I can print also uh, this picture to the printout report. Um, printout report, 
50%, OK, as screen view, and we'll print it. Also, um, I can show my serviceability checks. Um, I can see the compressive uh, stress for the concrete, for the steel, the tension stress, and I can show also my, uh, maybe I took, take two pictures, print this, okay, and then I print another one with the uh, crack, uh, location of the cracks and the deflection, and print this as well. Okay. This is the design of the concrete members. Um, after all, we can now uh, maybe take a look at our printout report. And I'll just make a quick save in between. Uh, and then see how the printout report uh, looks like. Um, I have the printout report here in the data navigator and with double clicking on it I can open it. And we should see some more data as before. Okay, it takes some time to build. Okay. So I'd like to view maybe uh, two pages at once. And I can see here my support reactions that I printed before. Um, I can see here also my uh, internal forces that I printed for all um, the design situations. I see my internal forces for the beam, all the tables uh, that I have here uh, regarding the um, concrete design and I don't have results here of the concrete slabs because I didn't analyze those results but the beam is here and we see here the pictures that I printed individually um, just before I opened the printout report. Altogether we have 31 pages. Uh, if I want to see the results of the surface design I have to close it again and I have to analyze the results of concrete surface as well. And then I should also see those results in the printout uh, report. Okay, let's open it one more time. Um, and then I will think we are pretty much also at the end of this uh, demonstration. So, now let's see if we can see all the other results of the concrete design. RF concrete, here we go. Takes some time. It loads the results while we are navigating and here we see also the reinforcement and everything. It seems to be clear here again. Okay. Um, I have picked at some of the questions that have come in and one question was about the, well, that, that was more or less several times a question, is about the um, real deflection of the slab um, in the correct situation. Now everything was pretty much uh, linear deflection, but if I want to have the real deflection of the slab um, in the correct situation, I, I can do this with the module RF concrete uh, surface, uh, RF concrete uh, deflect, or which is in the, uh, which can be found in the surface model, module. Therefore, I open the surface module. And, uh, but we have to do a little bit uh, work beforehand. Uh, the service ability limit state, I can go to the analytical method here and I can see here deflection with RF concrete deflect. And here I can also 
enable shrinkage and tension stiffening and creeping and so on. Um, this is a more or less nonlinear analysis, and I cannot use a linear combination of results in an envelope. So when I want to do it, I cannot do it for the result combination six. I have to provide a individual combination. Now, um, when we look at the internal forces, or let's look at the quasi-permanent uh, results. When I look at this, look at the deflections. You can see here that the deflections are biggest in the area where is the wider span. That's kind of clear. Here it's not so bad, but here is the problem. Um, so I'll create, I have to find a load situation where this slab is mostly loaded. Yeah? And I have to make a, um, a, um, a load combination um, and not an uh, envelope, not a result combination. So what I do now is I use maybe load case self-weight, which the load is all over, plus uh, where the load sits on this uh, slab. So load case 1 and 2. And I can anytime, you do not have to work with the fixed load combinations that are created by RFM, I can anytime create my own load combination with my own safety factors. And I do this now. Um, that was the wrong switch. Um, and I create load case 1 uh, plus factor 0.3, which is the typical safety factor for the permanent combination of the live load. OK. Click OK. Did I do wrong here? 0.3. And then I here I need to have the delimiter. OK. And then I have here <coughs> my load combination, which I will use for the deflection design. Here now I have an individual situation. All the loads are there and displayed like this. I can run the analysis of this load combination and get a set of results. Note the deflection here is 3.4, 3.6 millimeters. Um, when I do this, now in RF concrete, in the correct situation, I'll get following uh, result. Let me open the module one more time. Um, I'll do following. I'll uncheck this again and do not use uh, the deflection module here. Here we analyze the real, the regular results. You can do this quickly. And then I'll copy the case. I'll copy the same thing. Um, and I call it deflection. So I work with the same settings when I analyze the deflections. And here I set then um, I would like to do the deflection analysis. OK, but not with the quasi-permanent combination, but with the um, combination that I just created for deflection. OK, I run the analysis. And now it's a nonlinear case. And at the result, I get a nonlinear deflection. And we can look it up in the serviceability design. And here we see we have a UC local total of 16 millimeters is the existing value. Limiting value is not quite right. I forgot to set this. Um, when I do the deflection analysis, I'll get different tables here with the deformation analysis, and I can set here uh, the limiting value. So um, I can analyze the limiting value um, as a um, when I divide the maximum length divided by 250, for example, and I can pick this distance here from here to here, for example. Huh? So we talk about 7.8 meters, and the limiting value will be 
8 meters divided by 250. And when I run the analysis again with this limiting value, we should be quite okay. And we see here we have required the 16 and, oh, hang on, total. We have here limit is 31 and we have on the 16, so the utilization ratio is 0.6. And the concrete stress problem is again here at the uh, column. Okay, um, which reminds me that I also have to show the punching um, that I forgot. Um, so, um, please note that we have the deflection. We can also show this now here in the graphic view. Results, serviceability, uh, deformations. We have here 16. And if I show the same thing, maybe I can view a window, different window, new window window parallel and here is the nonlinear and here will be the linear which is only 3.6 is that correct yes so we have about or almost now four uh, four three five to about four times more uh, of the deflection between four and five times more of the linear deflections we have in the nonlinear situation. Okay, this was this question, and then uh, let's quick uh, take a look at the punching uh, check. We have here this situation where we have a lot of um, force that is concentrated on this column here. Uh, with the module RF punch, we can check this, and this will not take us very long, we'll open it. Um, I'll use the ultimate limit design situation, I use your code again. Um, materials, we've seen several times now. A specialty is that I can take into account openings around the uh, point support that will reduce the share capacity or the capacity against punching. Uh, I can enter the location and the type of the openings here. Um, we have longitudinal reinforcement that can de be defined by the cover and by the direction and which is now as always 0 and 90 degrees and we have here the individual node for punching. It already knows that it is um, the um, it already knows the, the node where there's just, just one support, node number six, which is also um, um, set up here. We know the surfaces that are connected to this node. And I can put here the dimensions of the column. Okay. I can enter here all the code parameters. Um, I assume the position is somewhat in the middle of the slab. Um, the shear reinforcement should be designed, if so, vertical. Um, I should, I want to get um, the reinforcement um, should be laid out. So it will now create a reinforcement first in longitudinal directions and if I can um, provide uh, um, enough reinforcement that punching is not a problem, it will not introduce any shear reinforcement. Okay, and with this I run the analysis and I get here a design criterion of one and if I look at the details, I have a effective, uh, what is it? Where is my reinforcement content? We can take a look graphically as well. So the applied force is 659 uh, kilonewton. It's the maximum shear stress, basically. Um, there are um, moment in center of perimeter in x direction and all those minimum moments that have to be 
taken into account are um, uh, set there. We have the here's the max the applied shear force 990 uh, 25 kilonewtons. The governing punching load is the same, um, and then we should get some required reinforcement uh, at the end. And we actually the, the design is the uh, resistance for shear and the maximum force which is there and the criterium ends up then as one. If I look into the graphics, I can show my required reinforcement on top which is 22.4. I can also show again the value. Maybe this time I only want to have um, the extreme value. Yeah, uh, top, the, the other direction and I get my values as well here. So this is the punching shear check, which is done in the module RF uh, punch. OK. This was the live demonstration. I'm sorry uh, for the slight problems that we have. Um, uh, but this is live demonstration, and things like this, uh, I guess, can happen. And it's, I'm apologizing for it. I hope it still was a good uh, webinar for you and you've learned something. Um, if you need more information, you're welcome to visit our website. You can uh, follow us also in our social media channels or in our Luba blog that's also available on the website. Also, do not hesitate to download a trial version. Um, you can uh, test out the concrete design yourself. Um, in, with the trial version for 30 days. I'd like to also inform you that there is another webinar in at the end of October. This time then will be about advanced steel design using our FAM and there's more webinars planned also later this year. This webinar that we just had will be recorded and will be also online in during the next days and you can um, take a look at them in detail again and yeah thanks for your time today and i hope we will be uh, you'll be part of a webinar again in the near future bye bye